Okay, just really quick then. You know what? Okay, so 11 years ago, so um, around September, November of 2012, I was in the worst shape of my life. Like financially, I was a mess. I was um, about to lose my house. I was facing my fourth eviction. You know, Christmas was coming. I didn't have money. Like I went through years and years as a single mom of struggle. And listen, I quit school my senior year of high school. So I was already going through life feeling like a failure. I felt like I failed at that point. And that was just my destiny, right? As much as I got up and tried, like it was just a struggle, but I still got up and tried, right? I still prayed and I still got up and tried. And um, it came to the point where in December of 2012, even after losing my car, our Christmas was a hundred dollar gift card that someone anonymously donated to my son's school. We think it was a swim coach, but we don't know. They saved us that, that year for sure. And um, I knew network marketing. I'd heard of it. My parents had been in a lot of businesses and um, I never saw them have success. It really seemed the only people having success were people that knew the owners, right? <laughs> it's like you had to know somebody to have success. And um, so it kind of swayed me away from it. Like, right, I really wasn't interested. I'll just, and I would have a sales job and be the top salesperson, right? And then I'd have to hear my dad tell me, oh my gosh, you're making them millions of dollars. <laughs> just work for yourself, Right. Um, so listen, I ended up deciding um, around um, March, yeah, March 2nd of 2013, that um, it was not intentional. Like I had a girl on Facebook promoting a product on Facebook and I'm like, I want to buy this. The girl talked me into selling this product. And before I know it, I'm in a network marketing company. <laughs> I didn't want to do this. She was like, maybe you'll just earn enough to buy your products. And it happened. So I'm sitting here, you know, trying to make enough money to pay for my products, um, working my regular job um, at the time, studying to get my health insurance license, my life insurance, health and life insurance license. And um, and then this company came along. I'm struggling. Listen, two weeks after I got in the company, they had an event in Dallas. And I'm like, it's an hour from my house. I lived in Fort Worth at the time. And I'm like, I got to go to this event. And my dad, all he was saying to me is like, are you crazy? You can't afford to miss work, right? You're going to go to some event. And I was like, I don't know. I just, something in my gut is telling me I need to go. Right. And I, even though I'd never like had success or done this and I was struggling y'all like, listen, my landlord was waiting for three months of rent. And at that point, I had already sold my couch and my kitchen table to someone on a buy, sell trade group on Facebook. Do you know what it's like to see someone carrying out your kitchen table and your son to ask mom, what are we going to do? Like these people are taking our stuff, right? My son is a senior in high school and I'm feeling more like a failure, but holding my head up because I'm like, I've got to just keep going. I have to keep going. Like my gut just told me you can't give up because if you give up, that means you fail. That's the only way you will fail is if you give up. So I'm like, you know what? I've got to go to this event. Something is telling me to go. I go to that event. I meet Ben Glinsky. I meet Tim Miller. I walk up to them and him two, again, two weeks into the business. And listen, before this, and even at this event, I had no confidence. If you were talking to me, um, I couldn't even look you in the eyes. I felt so worthless. I felt so worthless because I spent years of my life in physical and mental abusive relationships. I even stayed in a battered women's shelter with my kids on two different occasions. So I was called worthless and I felt worthless, right? But I went into this thing that day and I just, knew I was going to change my life when I saw these people standing on stage saying they did it. They did it. And it gave me that confidence that day. It's like, you know what? If that girl can do it, I know I can do it. So I went into that event that day and that was in March of 2013. And I'm telling you, April of 2013, the end of April, 
Um, I got down on my knees on um, in a chair, uh, the only chair I had in my living room because I'd sold everything else. And I gave it all to God. I was like, I'm putting it all at your feet and I'm going to get up and I'm just going to build my business. Right. I was, I was, I'm just going to build my business. I gave my landlord some more money from my selling my furniture. And I stood up after that prayer. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I, I, my worries were gone. I'd already put it at his feet. My worries were gone. And I was all in. I'm telling you two days later, after that prayer and giving it all to him, my life changed. I had a post go viral on Facebook and I made by, that was April of 2013. By September of 2013, I paid cash from my landlord um, to, to buy my house. The house that he was going to evict me from, he didn't want to evict me from. <laughs> he ended up telling me, Courtney, I want to sell you this house. I paid cash for that home. The first home I ever bought in my entire life. I was 37 years, well, at that time, 38 years old. And I was able to buy that home cash. I'm telling you, it works. And Ben Glinsky is amazing. This is why I joined Live Good. I was in another company, like Tim said. But, you know, after I just kept seeing everything and my gut told me, Courtney, you you can't worry that you didn't get in when he first opened the doors, right? Because, listen, when I got into Skinny Body Care, it was two years after they opened the doors. So if you don't get into the beginning, you're still good. You can still do it, right? I was two years. It was two years in. And listen, so I decided my gut told me to go. So I ran with Live Good. I ran with Live Good. And guess what happens when you run? You attract other people that run. And so I've been so blessed and grateful. I can't wait till after I tell y'all, talk to y'all about the some of the things that I do in my business that I can introduce you to my amazing team because this is what happens when you run. People want to run with people that are excited and running also. You can't expect people to get excited about the business or about joining you. If you're sitting there every day looking and feeling like Eeyore, you want to join my business? You think you might be interested? You want to check check this out? Or, oh my gosh, you have to jump in right now. Like, who do you want to join, right? You want to join someone that is excited. So you've got to get excited about your business. You've got to get excited about the opportunity that is here for you right now. Quit saying, I wish I would have joined when they first started. You did it, you, but you're in now. Don't waste another day wishing. You get in and you, you, if you have been in for a few months and you haven't been working, this is your sign right now. Courtney got in skinny body care two years after it started and she still made a million dollars within the first two years. In By 2015, I was had made a million dollars. So I'm telling you, you can still do this. You can do this no matter when you started. So let me go on and move on to something that I do daily to build my business. And it's about building um, for me and what I have found out of doing this for uh, since 2013 is um, you've got to build your following and you've got to love on your following. So something I do every single day in my business is we do a power hour. And uh, I'm going to show y'all how we do this. I'm not going to go through like a whole hour of this, but I'm just going to brief y'all and I'm going to give you, so be prepared to take some screenshots because I have it all um, typed out here and it's going to tell you how every single day you can do a power hour in your business and build your following. And my following, I've built it from literally 600 friends um, to almost 2 million followers. So listen, these, this does work. <laughs> okay. It does work. And the more people that are following you, listen, the more people are going to see your stuff, right? That's what you want. So let's go on to that. Um, if you're getting some value out of this or you're excited or you're ready to relaunch your business, please put in the comments that you're excited. Like, let me know <laughs> that you're excited about this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so let me go ahead. I'm going to share my screen here. And we're going to go through what I do in a power hour. Again, be, be prepared to take some screenshots here. Um, hopefully, y'all can see my screen. Can um, can y'all comment? Yes. <laughs> can, I can't. I don't know. Hopefully, y'all can see my screen here. So 
uh, power hour. Uh, I'm just going to go through these real quick. So this is what power hour is. Just in basic terms, power hour is a one hour time period that I get on with my team. And for that one hour, we do income producing activities. We do activities that build our followings. Um, we do um, activities to love on people, right? Basic things that you can do in your business and things that I have done, again, to build my following to almost 2 million people. So um, again, this is what Power Hour is. To me, it feels like a mastermind every day. I love it. I encourage you with your team to start doing a Power Hour. It's one hour a day, and we, we actually only do it four days a week. So this is exactly what it is. And now we're going to go over what we do on the Power Hour. The first thing we do is we do our gratitude, goal, and congratulations. We write down the three things you're grateful for. It sets off the tone for our whole Power Hour. You want to be in that abundance mode when you start your Power Hour. The second thing we do is we write down our three goals. What do you want to accomplish today before your head hits the pillow? Again, focus on what you can control. Keep your goals activity focus. Example, I'll make 12 new connections today during power hour. And then again, the last thing we do is a congratulatory statement. Listen, we don't congratulate ourselves enough, right? Growing up and everything else, congratulations, congrats. We don't do this enough. Every day, you're going to make a congratulatory statement to yourself. Think about something you did that you're proud of. Maybe you went live and you stepped out of your comfort zone. Maybe you got your first pre-enrollee. Whatever that is, congratulate yourself. Write it down. Listen, what you write, you invite. I'm a big fan of writing things down in my business. Okay, the second thing we do on Power Hour um, is, let's see, our happy birthday messages. Okay. Happy birthdays, most people think, oh, I'm going to go to their Facebook page and write happy birthday. Listen, everybody does that. You're on the, that their Facebook with 500 other people saying happy birthday. Your, your happy birthday, I mean, as much as your intentions are good, it's really not special, right? If you want it to be special, you get in their messenger, Listen, relationships are built in Messenger, and this is an opportunity to connect. Now, to find birthdays, go to your Facebook search bar, type in birthdays. It's going to bring up everyone that's had a birthday in the last few days, everyone that's having a birthday, and, um, you know, your current birthdays, right? Also, what I love about this is it gives you a chance to go through your friends list. Listen, on, on Facebook, some people leave Facebook. Some people, you know, move on to their second home. You know, whatever it is, they may not be active anymore. This gives you a chance when you go to their birthdays. What I personally do is I go to their page first and make sure they're still active. If they're not, I unfriend them. That space, 5,000 may seem like a lot of friends, but it's not a lot. Listen, that space is precious. So use that time every day. It takes a couple of minutes to just go through those birthdays and check out those pages. So, and again, happy birthday messages are, it's a simple task, but I'm telling you, you start doing this, you're going to see a difference in your algorithm. You will definitely see a difference. These people are also going to start seeing you on Facebook again. You may have been hidden. They're going to start seeing your stuff. It helps your algorithm. So again, screenshot that if you need that for later. And next, we're going to move on to commenting on Facebook posts. Okay, so how many of us complain that nobody's commenting on our stuff? Nobody likes our stuff. Nobody sees our stuff. You got to give love if you want love. You cannot be sitting here saying nobody's loving on my stuff. When you're not loving on theirs or the only people you're loving on or are other affiliates, right? You've got to move out of that. You've got to go find 10 prospects every day that you can go to one of their Facebook pages and go love on one of their posts. The, po the comment needs to be at least five words or more. You can add emojis if you want, but at least five words. Facebook wants it to be genuine. If it's at least five words, they feel it's more genuine. But again. Facebook, you want to be social, right? You got to give to receive. 
And the more consistent you are with this, you're going to realize your algorithm is changing. This, this does work. I actually have a girl on my team. I think she had 200 followers when we start, she started with a team back in May. And right now she has almost 6,000 followers. So this may seem like, oh, these are just simple things, Courtney, but I'm telling you this because it works. These are simple, but it works. So um, again, go comment on 10 prospects posts, whether it's potential affiliates or potential customers. So um, next, what we do is we do the same thing, except we do it on Facebook stories. So what you're going to do on Facebook stories is you want to find those people that you're not currently engaging with. What I love about Facebook stories is you don't have to teach. If it's someone that you want to bring in the business, I love it because these people already know how to do a Facebook story. You're not having to teach them. So they know some of these basics of Facebook. So what you want to do is do the same thing we did before. You're going to go comment to 10 of their Facebook stories. But what this is also going to do is it is going to put you right into their messenger. When you comment on a story, you get into their messenger. So, you know, when you send a message and people are like, well, they don't see my message. This is a way around that commenting on those Facebook stories. Again, to find your stories, you know, go to the top, it's next to Reels, but scroll over as far as you can on your stories. Those people you haven't spoken to in a very long time, so you want to reach out to those people. So the next thing I want to talk about is my favorite thing to do on Facebook. Like, I seriously think this is the thing that has kept me relevant and kept my following up. For the last 10 years. This is something I do every single day without fail. If it is 1155 at night and I realize I haven't done this, I will go do this. And what you do is you type in memories in your search bar and it's going to bring up everyone on Facebook. Or I'm sorry. It's going to bring up all of your Facebook memories from this day for as long as you've had your Facebook. Mine goes back 15 years. You're going to click on those posts that you commented on, and you're going to comment on them again. It's going to bring it back up in the news feed. Some of these people are going to be seeing your post again. Some that haven't seen your post for five, 10 years, right? They're, and guess what happens? They're going to see you and be like, oh my goodness, where what happened to Linda? I'm going to go check out her page and see what she's up to. Uh, well, wow, Angela, what is she up to doing, right? And listen, if you have, another product that you had posted back three or four years ago, and you see that in your memories, what I do is I go comment back on those posts. And I'll say something like, oh my gosh, uh, wait until you try the coffee I have now, right? It gives you that chance to reconnect with people. So again, screenshot this so you have the information, but it is something I do daily without fail. Uh, next, um, so... Something with our team that we have, and I really suggest you to do this with your team, is we have a private Facebook group just for our team. The only way people can get in it is they are our customers or they're our prospects. And um, we actually, the way that works is if it's a private group, not a closed group, but a private where you can get in, in there by invite only, then all the admins and moderators can see who added that person into the group. The way that works is when we add someone in there, if somebody is ready to buy or they see some posts, then we, you know, we'll, we'll comment or tag whoever added them into that group to help them get their stuff purchased. So I really suggest to create a private team group within your team. Again, you want it to be protected. You want it to be within your team. Please screenshot this so you can get all the information on what we do in our group. But during power hour, I encourage everyone during our power hour to go into our personal group and make a post and they comment on five other posts in the group. That way, everything is getting engaged with. So again, that is something that we do daily. Um, and then finally, um, follow up. So follow-up can be different for, for different people. On myself, on follow-up, 
Um, I reach out to people about the group. So I will either check on them and see if they have questions um, of after seeing products in the group, because we do a lot of testimonies in our group. Um, or I'll ask them, I'll invite them into the group, right? That's another way of following up. Hey, you commented on my post that you were wanting more information about this methylene blue. Do you mind if I add you to my special group of others that are using it so you can hear some other testimonies? It gives them a chance to see that. So, and again, just reach out to people and build relationships. This is Facebook. This is social media. you got to talk to people. If people know, like, and trust you, they will buy from you. Um, one last thing I'm going to end with uh, before I introduce my team is I went to an event this last weekend and um, John Maxwell spoke and he said something that really hit me. And um, he asked about your tombstone at the end of life. Do you want it to say he had fans or he had friends? And that's how I want to live my life. Like, I know I have a lot of followers on Facebook, but I do my very best to not just make them followers, but to make them friends, to share my life with them, to be vulnerable and open with them. And um, it, it's helped it, 10 years in this industry and, you know, have made millions of dollars now in this industry. It's definitely have worked. So I just, I want to encourage you to make friends um, while you're, you're building your business and just be a real human, be a real person. And I wish you lots of success. Um, I'm done with this. I'm, uh, let me stop sharing now. <laughs> I hope you were able to get some stuff out of that. But next, I'm super excited to introduce one of my all-time favorite people um, that, again, running in this business, you will attract other runners.